Tuesday, September the 2nd, 2014, welcome to order at 7 p.m. Call to order, please. Mayor McLaughlin? Here. Mr. McIntyre? Here. Mr. Zambach? Present. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Rick Lowry? Here. Mr. Craybacher? Here. Mr. Mike Lowry? Here. All present. Thank you. We will now have the invocation by Councilman John Craybacher. Please, sir, stand, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you and praising you for your great nation and city. I thank you for the plan you gave to our forefathers by which to govern so that our destiny does not rest in the hands of just one person. In, pray, in praying for those in authority, I therefore lift up our Congress, our Senate, and our council to you. I pray that by your holy power, our legislative bodies would make laws that are just. Father, I ask you to give them wisdom to make decisions that would strengthen and prosper the United States and New Carolina. I desire that they would make right decisions concerning the politics, the social welfare, and the economics of our country and city. I pray that we all be motivated by your hand and not by not on our own personal concerns. Amen. Mr. Craybock, that was quite nice. Thank you. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. We'll use the flag on the back if you would, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have action on the minutes of the regular meeting, August 18th, 2014, please. Second. 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 Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Craybach. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you. Communication this evening. Any communication? Not tonight. Okay, we'll go to city manager's report. Okay, thank you, Mayor and Council. I'd like to start under Section A, Action Report, regarding the Madison Street School. Um, this past weekend, we did have another problem with, um, this is the second time it's happened, somebody has cut off our lock and put their own lock on, which means the keys we have don't work, so we have to turn around and cut off their lock and replace it with one of our locks. They also left some windows open. So we have been in the process for the last six weeks trying to get a quote on uh, security cameras. Um, so we are moving forward with that and um, we will soon have cameras in place at, this, at the school, portable cameras that we can use at other places in the city and um, take with us if, if and when we send the, sell, sell the building. We do have uh, two different people who have expressed interest in purchasing the school. Um, I don't know how likely either one of them are. They are going forward with inspecting it for asbestos and that kind of thing. So. I will let you know as it gets more realistic. Right now, I think it's more of a hope, but we'll we'll see how how that moves forward. Um, under Before you move on from that, the mm -hmm. sign that's down there that says it's for sale. Mm -hmm. Please try to straighten that up a little bit. If someone has a chance, please. Okay. It's blown over to the beach. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Under service discussion, I'd like to turn that over to Mr. Kitko, our service director. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Good evening, Mayor and Council, members of the public. Uh, I just have a few items to touch on. Uh, I just want to update on the main brake repairs. We'll be patching those. I thought it was going to be last week. It'll end up being this week. We uh, had about five catch basins that we had to repair on Main Street, so you'll see the cones that are surrounding those. We had a bunch of them that were undermining, so those became more of a safety issue. We want to get those done first. Uh, the only thing we have left on those is to get the asphalt put around those basins. 
The hydrant flushing is complete. Uh, the pool is closed down for the season and we'll be winterizing that. Uh, the meter uh, change out project it has gotten delayed about a month. Their shipment, ours is in with the city of Chicago, Illinois, and something with the manufacturing just got delayed. So we're supposed to receive our shipment of meters and equipment right around the end of September, and they're expecting to start about October 10th, right after we do a full city regular meter reading. Um, we are looking at street sweeping. Uh, I've been getting with uh, Ms. Harris and uh, Kim with uh, funding and not sure if we can fund a full citywide street sweep, but we're kind of looking at a getting the main main city streets, main drags, and maybe some more uh, depending on the cost. So we're looking at a couple different avenues, uh, but that's all I have right now. Yes. Yes. How soft? Been all over the news, all over the uh, about the increase in the prices, and I've talked to you about this before about alternatives, and I know. Sugar Beets is one of them, there's, I guess, along with that comes that smell or something like that. Is it been the time that you start looking at something like that? This salt trend from what I'm reading the paper today is not going to slow down. It's going to be different first. Uh, depends on this winter. If we get a, another hard winter, yeah, it could be another year or two of higher prices. But if we uh, end up getting a regular winter it, next year, it could be back down around the $50 to $60 range. That's kind of what happened this last time. Um, I just got an email before I left work today that um, we have an eligibility of, or of getting about 70 more tons. So instead of us having a uh, possibility of getting our 300, we are able to get 70 on the original bid. So we can at least get that amount. But um, what sure price? Compared that'll be at a that'll be at a, a reduced price. That won't be at the hundred and some dollars. It'll be whatever the entity who is um, going to share some of their salt. Um, the Swap 4G divided us up into five groups, kind of logistically, where you're located. So we're in with Miami County, Enon, New Carlisle, and a few others, and they're going, okay, who's got what left, and can we share some salt? So instead of a company who normally gets four to 5,000 tons, they're going to reduce it and be able to share some. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Mr. Lowry. Good. You sure? Yeah, to, to follow up on that, on what Mr. Lowry brought up, and you mentioned that we're, we're in, there's four or five groups somewhere in Miami County. Is there any way to form like a consortium where we may share some salt? So if Troy has excess left over, we could get some of that or, or vice versa. Um, I know that I heard on the radio that some communities down by Cincinnati are doing this. I didn't know if that's something that we could do it either for purchasing or for maximizing um, supplies that we have to work with other communities. That's what that's what we're already doing. That that is we yeah. do have that in place. That's yes. what the SWAT. Yeah, SWAT 4G is already a group of southwestern or something. Yeah, it's southwest. It's basically everybody, but we're about north of Cincy, so I think not even Westchester, Springboro, all the way up to the Troy area. It's kind of southwestern Ohio. I think there's 50 to 60 entities plus. We're in that group. Does that help us with purchasing or just using purchasing, them? pricing, getting the bulk? So most salt companies want to be able to say, how much salt do you need? I need X. We'll sell you X and you're committed to that amount. They want to be able to truck it all you know, in one location <coughs> instead of having New Carlisle bid separate from Enon, Enon bid separate from whatever township. So, oh, okay. I see. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's a question. Yeah, uh, Gerald, uh, Gerald, how long ago was that? That was a full reconstruct, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. The ground up two years ago, one year ago? Oh, Gerald's probably been four, four now. Years. Four, 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 four or five three years, years ago. Because we've done three on Flora and one on Prentice, yes. so it might be five or six. Okay, so I didn't think it was that long ago, but with that being said, is it, should it be spidering the way it's already starting to that soon? Where do you see where do you see spidering at on on Gerald? I'll have to go take a look. I haven't from, looked that close. From beginning to end, I mean, it's not wide cracks, but I mean, you can see it starting to crack throughout the whole street. I just I thought that seemed awful soon for that to be happening, as new as that street is. I mean, it, I, you know, I, I thought it was only like two years old, so that's that's why I was so concerned. But if it's six, I guess that's a little bit longer, obviously. But uh, yeah, let me take a look at it and see what uh, what you're talking about. And then I have one more question. With the street levy, does street sweeping fall under that as far as, I didn't know. 
Okay. That's reconstruction, repair, and, and replacement. And replacement. Okay. There's what, only three. What's the ball? Just a rough idea. Ballpark a full city suite versus you know partial. You know, we we've been running about uh, anywhere between six and seven thousand. And we're only going to do a partial. We're do, just we're kind of looking. Okay. So just depend on just depend on what kind of funds. And the only reason I say that is we we had it budgeted. But we just found out that there's a, in, in particular, one ash tree at the corner of Adams and Jefferson that is that monstrous um, ash that is diseased and overhanging a, uh, that house. We need to get a tree uh, company in and a crane company. It's going to cost us $6,000 to remove this tree. Com not full 100% unexpected, but nearly. We didn't think it was that bad, but it is. I just, my personal opinion, and I, obviously I don't want to sink the city with street sweeping, but I would love to see you guys try and go for the whole city. It's, you know, people's streets, as bad as they are on the own, uh, you know, at least get the gravel off of them makes a huge difference. So that's just my two cents. Well, we would definitely do it if we have the money. Right. Yeah, so, no doubt. I know. I just, just don't want to. <laughs> Anyone else? Any questions? I, I do have one. I noticed that they opened up the street again at CVS Main Street. I thought they had all their underground finished that they were doing and so forth. Open Main Street up. Okay. There's, there's a square that I think had blacktop in it that they had cut previously. Mm -hmm. And they took that out today. I don't know if they were fixing something there. I was just wondering what was going on. I was not on Main Street at all today, so I'll have to uh, check with them. Like the entrance on Main Street, just to the north end of the square, so forth. Or it was, now it may be closed up again right now. I don't know. This morning it was. I, I know the one that was right where their drive was. Is that what you're talking about? Right where the approach is to CVS on Main Street? Right. There was a patch probably about the size of maybe four or five feet by five feet or so. That was a, I know there was temporary asphalt in there. It wasn't a permanent repair. So if you saw, I'll have to go check, but I'm just taking well, it. It was a, all taken out this morning. Then probably put real asphalt so maybe back that's in. That's what they were doing. That's why I'm talking. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Okay, then continuing under informational items in your package, you had a memo from our tax administrator uh, regarding reciprocity. I always say it wrong, reciprocity, whatever. <laughs> and because our uh, law director was not able to be here tonight, he sent me an email which I gave to you all this evening, um, trying to explain the memo um, a little more in day-to-day -day language um, so if anybody reads through that and has any questions we can either have Miguel address it at the next council meeting or if you get me the questions ahead of time I'll try to get answers from him um, but I think his email pretty much explains the, the differences between the tax credits and the tax giving back I'm not going to say it again <laughs> yes Take the word for it. Uh, Mr. Lowry, Okay, you've just discussed this. We've all read it. This is a question that every council person and every city employee in the city of New Carlisle gets hit with on a regular basis. Is there any way to publish both of these in the New Carlisle paper? I mean, I can send I mean, them to you. If this, you... Out here. this is a question that is asked every year. I'd like to have a penny for every time it's been asked. And, it, and the information really needs to be get out. I would ask that we read right here that it's pretty in depth. And, you know, I just like to see it put in a paper form and passed out so everybody has a chance to read it and understand it. Can that be done? Uh, that's probably going to depend on their space. So I, I can send it to them and they can look through it and maybe condense it or. I'll definitely tell it and show it to Andy. Okay. If, if I can make a suggestion, please don't condense it because somebody's going to say they left. Really important part. <laughs> you know where I'm coming from? Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> um, dealing with reciprocity and, and the other um, tax credit issue, I know that a few months ago you and I spoke about a, um, there's an organization in, in not just Montgomery County that deals with Dayton and all the suburbs in which they provide some sort of reciprocity agreement. I can't remember the name, it's something like Miami Valley whatever community something mm -hmm. and part of that was um, business deals or, or tax issues and they give incentives and it I know you had contacted them and, you know, about being part of this because we are in the greater Dayton area and fewer heights being right over there and we mm -hmm. sort of 
receive the thanks but no thanks reply. Um, it was mostly for communities within the county. Yeah, Montgomery within county. Montgomery County. Right. And so it, it, places like Kettering or Centerville or Hoover Heights Moraine. in Moraine, mm -hmm. uh, West Carrollton, it, was, it, it seemed like we were being, the door wasn't open for us to even entertain that option for people who do work within Dayton mm -hmm. or the surrounding communities in Montgomery County. So mm -hmm. we, we have looked into it, it just it wasn't in the cards as far as the towers and <coughs> Yeah. Mr. I had to come across this article in Springfield New Sun just the other day. Uh, it's about eight, uh, SB 282. It eliminates reciprocity agreements. So where you work is where your taxes go to. So you're not working in Springfield or Columbus where I pay 3%. I will not have to pay that at all. Like, I would just pay my 1% in New Carlisle. No, you Iowa. said where you work is where you Well, pay. no, no, sorry. Where you live. You only pay your income taxes for the city you live in. That months. would be better. Yeah, not, not where you, not just where you yeah. work. Yeah, I didn't mean it like that. Sorry. I <laughs> misstated it. Yeah, so uh, it's 282. <laughs> and uh, it passed the Ohio House, and now it goes to the Senate, and they, they're going to force a vote on it, hopefully or shortly, is what Senator Jordan stated in this article. Uh, so. I think that might be something we should look into and probably call our state senator and say, hey, Chris, uh, we really want you to vote for this so that we can receive our money and not vote for this and double tax. Is that part of all the changes they're trying to do with the income taxes? Because if it is, I don't know that I would want to vote for it. Uh, there's a lot of changes they're th trying to do. Those changes are like, they're like, this is a totally different bill. Like, there's a okay. bunch of bills that are changing the income tax, but this one in particular doesn't affect, you know, how, sorry, there's all these snacks around here, uh, how local government would be funded, like as HB5, which is something uh, Rita and the Bahamas League are against. It has nothing to do with that. Okay. So. Anyone else? Mr. Craig. Um, did you go to that meeting last I am just last getting ready to talk about that. Yep. Yep. I did not have it uh, in your packets, but um, the finance director, Colleen, and I did go to the Clark County Budget Commission last week. Um, basically, I have a list of five things, basically, is what I came back or came away from the meeting with. And Mrs. Harris, if you come up with anything else, please join in. But basically, the response was, it's always been done this way. Yeah. Ever since they've been there, it's been done that way at least since the 80s. No one knows the actual formula. You should be more concerned with the fact that the state is reducing the amount that you're getting and not with the formula. We were basically, <laughs> yeah, you know, they tolerated us being there. They did let me, let me speak. And um, uh, we also, once we got there, we got another memo stating that the money we thought we were going to get, which was approximately twenty-three thousand, I've got it here in my pile. But I'm, we were supposed to get approximately twenty-three thousand, twenty-three two seventy-one, has been further reduced down to twenty-two one fifty-five, an additional eleven $1 hundred dollars, and that was because of the um, state budget review. When they reviewed it, they decided uh, they still needed more money, so they just pulled it back out even more than what we thought. Um, the finance director from the city of Springfield was in the meeting and he did agree with us that he would, they would be willing to sit down and talk with us for the future. I mean, this is already set for this next three years. Um, so that is where I would like to start is going with Springfield and talking to them to see if they would consider, let, you know, basically they hold all the cards. Um, even if all the other villages, townships and cities voted one way, the county and the city have all the votes and they would, you know, we won't have the 55 or 51 or whatever it would take. There's no way that that would change. So that is one way I would like to address it is first to sit down and talk with the city of Springfield. Um, I think I could talk with the county commissioners as well. I don't think that it would be as much of a, they're not really the ones that hold the cards. It's the city of Springfield. Um, I would also like to um, send letters to our legislators regarding having them look at an alternative formula. Um, right now, this, what we're using is an alternate, but the formula that is set in ORC is so, would be so hard to use. Um, first of all, we had to come up with budgets that were in existence at the time that the law came into effect, which was like basically in the 1970s. Our records retentions don't require that we keep our records that long, our budgets that long 40 years ago. And I'm sure it's the same thing with all the other villages. So, you know, that's the, like one of, the, one of the elements of that formula is you have to have these budgets. So that pretty much shoots it right there. 
So I think uh, I was talking with the uh, county administrator, and, and he and I both agreed that it's more of a, um, a case of the, the formula needs to be more reasonably written and more easily to easy, easier to administer. It's not this hocus pocus kind of formula. So I think between talking with Springfield and then also talking to the legislators that maybe we can start a campaign over the course of the next three years to try to get everybody to look at, because like I told the commission, I'm like everything, between now and 1985, so many things have changed, to, in my opinion, that this is something that should be reviewed if at least every 10 years, if not even sooner. It shouldn't just be going and going and going without anybody ever actually thinking about why. Um, so basically that's what we left with. It was, you know, go write your letters. <laughs> they weren't really. How many people are on that committee? Three, and those are, three and those, they're, they're set by the ORC. It's not, they are all elected officials. It is our uh, county prosecutor, our county treasurer, and our county <coughs> auditor are the three people on the, on the board, on the commission. I said, well, that seems to slant it a little bit towards the county, don't you think? And they're like, yeah. Amy, I have a question. A couple, actually. Uh, Kim, I may have misunderstood you. Did you say, when you were speaking before, heard about the formula, did you say there was no formula that exists, or they didn't know? They didn't know what the formula was. They don't I know how they the came up with it. No, know. these exact percentages are the same percentages that were established back in 1985 or okay. wherever it was. They okay. don't know what they used to establish those. Okay. Second question. Um, I didn't understand what you said, what you meant when you said that Springfield holds all the cards. Because um, according to the vote, they get... Uh, the majority for sure. Yeah, I was trying to get the percentage, but it was um, it's like 44 percent. City of Springfield gets uh, 48 percent, and the county as a whole, as the county outside of all the other townships and villages and everything, gets 42. Okay, so when, when you said that, I thought you meant in the voting process or they had more well, say about the money than anyone else, and they shouldn't have any say in it. Well, based on their ratio is how they get to vote. So okay. like our vote is only like 0.017 or okay. and that's how that's how right. this formula is set up. I so you meant they had to say so in getting out of money and they should no, not say so no, whatsoever. No. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. So basically, um, originally council had asked me to do a resolution concerning the casino revenues and the local government. I do think that they're two entirely different things. The county does have the control on the casino money, which, you know, we can do a resolution if you want, either way, for both, for neither one. We can do letters for both, for neither one. But I do think that they are, the county doesn't have the control of the local government funds that I originally thought. It wasn't, they don't, don't have it in their power to change. So, um, I'm thinking that we do need to address them as two different, two separate issues. Council, does that sound reasonable? Two different yes. issues? Is that what we're for? Because it's two different issues. One is the state situation as a county. Right. Basically, that. Okay. Thank no. you for checking into that. Any other questions? And that's really all I had tonight. I'd be glad to answer any other questions. It's very frustrating. Yes, it is. Very frustrating. Mm -hmm. To not just to allow all the other entities also. How can they deem that Springfield is 48% of the money? That's how that. Mr. Zandlock yeah. brought up. You know, what, they don't know how they deem it. Yeah, that. exactly. And they don't care. They've just they always done important. it that way. <laughs> They've just what, always what done it that way. 10 times the population. Right, we're yeah, we're, we're about 60,000, so if we get 0.7%, they should be at roughly 7%. So, not <coughs> Yeah. Would there be a way to get a copy of that formula? <laughs> I asked them if I could see it, and they didn't, they didn't have it. They, they don't change it from year to year. But I still like to see it. Well, I asked them, they don't know what it is. They don't. They have never, that's what was mind boggling to me is that nobody has ever, Nobody's it's always been status quo for they, 30, 30 years. How do they, they get the money if they, they don't look at the formula? Oh, 
It's just the percentage. Is, the percentage doesn't change. So. They know the formula. They just don't know how they got to. Apparently, they don't know the formula. If they couldn't just if they couldn't explain it to her. I mean, yeah. yeah. I would love to see it in right now. This is the alternative formula too. It's not the ORC mm -hmm. set formula. That they could probably oh, get in. She just said she might have found it. Okay. Good, good. Mr. Collier, did you want to say something? I was just saying it has to be written, written into the ORC or administrative code, one of the two. The, the, it has to be. the original formula is in the ORC, but they're using an alternative formula, which they are allowed to do, and that's what they don't know how they came up with it. So why can't they just create a new formula because they're already using the formula well, they made up? Why in order to change it? back to the ORC one, you have to have the budgets, you have to get all the entities to vote that you want to go back that way, which, again, Springfield wouldn't want to go back to that. Well, my question is, like, if it's an alternative formula that they created, why can't they just create a new formula again? If all the entities alternate. vote to do that, that would be fine. But we would have to get all the entities in so Clark County to, to agree to say, to hey, that. we deserve our fair share. Springfield is getting this. Uh, Nina, you're getting nothing. We're getting nothing. Well, the I think we auditor and the treasurer are going to come in and ask you questions. Thank you for checking on that. Mm -hmm. so, Mr. Mayor. Not, not to be a dead horse, but I had a question. The, it's based on uh, tax forms or budget forms, whatever it is, from 40 years ago. I'm fairly certain the retention schedule of those documents is much shorter than 1970s. And these things are, are destroyed due to Ohio law or federal law or whatever it is. And so I don't know how anyone can justifiably say you need the last 40 years when you're also told you have to destroy the last 40 years of information. It's, it's frustrating. That's why we need to address it to the legislators to change the law. To change thank you for, for going into this. I know it's not easy to do. Thank you. Is that where your letter will go? Yes, so, to the legislators, yeah. Thank you. Okay, shall we go on, please? Uh, that's it for the city manager's yes. report. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're at comments from the members of the public. Anyone out there like to say anything to see? Thank you all for being here, by the way. And I also forgot to ask you to turn cell phones off. <laughs> I, have I haven't heard any, maybe. That's good. No comments? No one? All right, thank you. Again, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, committee reports? None this committee evening. Reports. Not at all. All right, we'll go into resolution. Mr. Collier. Mayor, would you like me to just read this in its entirety before we... Yes, sir, if you would. Okay, okay. Yeah. will do. Resolution 14-10R, a resolution remembering September 11, 2001. Whereas on September 11, 2001, we as Americans experienced acts of terrorism, the magnitude of which have never been felt on American soil, and whereas the city of New York, the Department of Defense, two airlines, in an area of southwestern Pennsylvania experienced direct damage resulting in injuries and loss of life because of these terrorist activities and whereas this will be the 13th anniversary on that terrible day and we still feel a need to remember that difficult time in the history of the United States and whereas in remembering we want to express our appreciation to firefighters, police and other rescue workers and Whereas we furthermore want to express our continued concern for all who lost relatives and friends in New York, at the Pentagon, and in Pennsylvania, and for the well being of all who were injured. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the council, the employees, and the citizens of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, this day and forever will remember September 11, 2001. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Motion to adopt resolution 14-10R. Second. Thank you. Are you ready to call this up? Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybach? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you. If you would go on into the ordinances, if you would, please. Ordinance. Yes. 
Ordinance 14 42, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance providing for the establishment of a new special revenue fund in order to provide for separate accounting of revenues and expenditures associated with the water meter upgrade fund of the city of New Carlisle. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lamb. Will we adopt ordinance 14 42? Second. Um, as an explanation of 14-42 and also the next two, they're all three connected to our water meter upgrade project. First one, which we're working with right now, is the establishing the actual fund, which did not exist before this uh, project. And then we'll go into moving the money to make sure it's where it needs to be. But they are all three connected to this project. It's accounting housekeeping, correct? Yes. <laughs> Any questions from anyone? Mr. Collier? Mr. Kraybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lauer? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lauer? Yes. We passed 7 to 0. Ordinance 14-43E, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending the estimated resources of the city of New Carlisle to the county auditor that would be available to appropriate for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2014, and declaring an emergency. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Make a motion to adopt ordinance 14-43E. Second. Mr. Second. <laughs> Do you need me to explain it again? If you'd like. <laughs> what I said. Just for the record, just for the sake of More of the same. Yes. <laughs> Amending estimated resources. Any questions? Anyone? Mr. Dyer, call for the vote. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Craybach. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Pass seven to zero. Ordinance 14 44E, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance supplementing certain appropriations of the City of New Carlisle, Ordinance 14 11E, and declaring an emergency. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, we adopt Ordinance 14 44E. Second. And this is just a supplementing of the appropriations to accommodate the, the money that we're getting uh, for the project. If I might say, people out there, it's the same money that we're looking at both, all, all three times, it's $40,000. Uh, it's just different ways that we have to do it for our bookkeeping, is that correct? It's grant money that we got that at the beginning of the year when we did the budget, we did not know we were going to get, but thanks to Mr. Kitko, we were able to get this money, and so that's reducing the cost of the project, but we have to let the auditors know, hey, we now have this money that we're allowed to spend, and then we have to put it into the appropriations so that we can spend it. Is that correct? Is that exactly right? <laughs> that was a very good explanation. You well, <laughs> did really good. Any questions from them? Mr. Collier, if you call for the vote. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Kramer. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you. Okay, we're in other business now. I think Mr. Mike Lowry would like to say something. Yes, I just want to let everybody know uh, Heritage Flight Festival is coming up the first weekend of October. And seeing that this is our 10th year, we're going to be doing fireworks on Saturday night, which will be uh, the 4th, around 9 o'clock. Uh, but this Thursday, September 4th, we'll be doing the company that we hired, which is Rosie out of Cincinnati. They're going to be doing a demo launch just to make sure they get the angle and everything right for the, for the actual the big show in October. So on Main Street in Washington, probably in that area, around nine o'clock on Thursday get to see them. I mean, they're only gonna shoot six off, but you know if you want to go see a couple of fireworks for a real quick show, go up town on Main Street and check them out. Did you want to say something about Buy a Boom? I can do buy yes, buy a boom, which is a fundraiser we're doing on the Heritage Flights website. 
Uh, you can go there and there's a tab that says contribute and we're doing uh, you know, to raise money for the fireworks show because our budget for the fireworks is $6,000, which is a lot for a little town like us. Uh, and that's all you know, from the Heritage Flight Festival and donations from private citizens. So uh, if you'd like to make a donation, you can always go to our website at heritageflight.com or uh, you can always see me or Lowell McLaughlin and, and do a, a, a donation in person if you'd like. They go on the website. Yeah. I got something. Yes, other business? Yeah, yes. other business. Um, I gave a copy to this to uh, Kim, and um, uh, my wife and I and a couple other people have been going up to the fitness center up here and play pickleball. And one of the things we, we did, to, uh, we decided to do is go to Troy. Troy is one of the largest pickleball places in Ohio. And I might not know what pickleball is, and I'm just going to read this. And, and what they what you can do is revitalize your tennis courts. You know, we, we did we, we did the tennis courts up there, but every time I drive past there, there's, there's not a whole lot of people, you know, using them for tennis. But um, I'm I'm just going to read what you said a uh, little bit about and try to explain what pick, pickleball is. Pickleball is a fun court sport played on a badminton sized court with a net lowered to 34 inches at the center. Well, we don't have to do that. That's what I said. It is played with a perforated ball, which is more like a wiffle ball, and a wood or composite paddles about twice the size of ping pong paddles. It can be played indoors or outdoors. It's easy for beginners to learn, uh, but can, can develop into a fast-paced competitive game for experienced players. Uh, in addition to being fun, the game has developed a reputation for its friendly and social nature. Um, and it, let me see what it says here. The popularity of pickleball is really being driven by seniors. This, you know, looks like us. You know, the reasons they enjoy pickleball in many ways uh, parallels the reasons that they can better utilize many tennis sports. They have lots of uh, free time and can, and can use the courts in peak as well as off peak hours. Uh, many former tennis players find pickleball a good step down sport when tennis becomes too demanding. Pickleball is easy to learn so new players can be introduced to it and playing in playing minutes. Um, my wife and I played with a 10 year old and they, they picked it up in like less than a half an hour and they're playing fairly competitive. We had to kind of Dumb it down a little bit, but you know, even a 10 year old can play. Because the pickleball court is considered smaller than a tennis court, more courts can be used uh, in the same space, allowing for more players at one time. Then it gives directions how to convert your. I just think it would be a great thing, you know, to kind of look into, mm -hmm. you know, uh, check it out. Uh, you know, all you have to do is draw, you know, a smaller court, draw, you know, different color lines, and can have fun with it. Just something else to do with the tennis right. courts. Thank you. Anyone else? Other business? Anyone? Staff? Anything? Other business? Okay. Mr. Collier, would you like to go ahead and read A, B, C, D, and E, please? Yes. City offices will be closed on Tuesday, November the 11th for Veterans Day. There'll be a joint government meeting Monday, September the 29th at 6.30 p.m. Here, here at Smith Park Shelter House, hosted by New Carlisle. There'll be a New Carlisle Crime Watch meeting on Wednesday, September the 10th at 6.30 here at Smith, Smith Park Shelter House. And D is uh, the Heritage of Flight Festival, which is October 3rd to October 5th. The fest festival cruise in is Friday evening, October the 3rd. Parade of Plains on uh, Saturday, October the 4th. And by the next meeting, we'll maybe zero in with some additional times on there. Uh, e is Election Day will be Tuesday, November the 4th, 2014. And why that's very important is there will be a city income tax on the ballot for New Carlisle. Yes, please, Senator Madigan. Talking about the city income tax, um, I would like to um, stress how important that is to the city. Um, just this last week, one of our deputies was involved in an accident. It was not his fault. Um, he was, somebody ran into him, but 
and he was not hurt seriously. However, it did total the vehicle, which just brings to the forefront the fact that we, that the police department, sheriff's office needs vehicles. They were old to start with, but now when they're totaled, we're kind of like between a rock and a hard place. You have to get the vehicle. Um, they need new computers, not just in their cars, but they also need computers in the office now because of the conversion of Windows no longer, is that, am I saying that right? Windows is no longer compatible to their computer or cannot be um, updated. updated. Right, so now their computers need to be, so this is just adding on to every, every time we talk, there's something else that needs to be replaced. So the, the, uh, the, the need is very, very real. The income tax increase has been dedicated to it going to the police department and if there's anything left, it would go to streets. Only those two topics would be where all the money would go. So I'm just, I want to make sure everybody realizes that the need is very, very real. And what's the percentage that we're looking to try to do this? A half of a percent increase. An additional half percent. Right. So it would be one right. and a half percent. Right. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Zimmer. I would like to emphasize to everybody that the we can reference how badly we need this. It's not the we that's sitting here, it's all the we that lives in the city of New Carolina. It's not us, it's us, the big us. Then one, one point I want to make. You heard us talking about trying to come up with $6,000 to do a street cleaning and so forth. That's how tight the budget is. Our budget is so tight, everything is budgeted out. Uh, that's why we need more income to be able to get the police and street, this half percent would help tremendously. It would free up a little money for us to be able to do these other little things that need to be done that we're scratching for and to keep a, a pool open. That's another thing. We're probably going to be in the red, considerably in the red on the pool this year. It's a service that we feel we need to do for the citizens of New Carolina. But again, as Mr. Zambach said, it's not we, it's the whole city of New Carolina. It's the services that the staff would like to provide that they can't provide now because they don't have the funds to be able to do so. Now, and to continue with that, the majority of our budget right now is taken up by money to support the police department. And when you consider the different federal mandates that come out, um, that gobbles up a lot of the income we may have. Last time, I think we had a surplus. We had to use that for the federally mandated police radios, the new ones we had to get. And now there's talk in Washington after Ferguson about having all police departments requiring them to have cameras on every officer. Well, it's not going to be a funded mandate. If, if that were to come through, we're going to have to pay for that. So we need a way to do it because most of our budget already goes to the police department. And uh, as far as roads go, a lot of what we get because we're a smaller bedroom community, a lot of the money we get is earmarked saying you can only do these type of streets or in these type of neighborhoods. So a lot of people are frustrated that they pay taxes and their roads never get done because the grants we get say you can only use it on these roads. And so we're trying to find ways to both fund the police department and keep our roads going in the face of limited budgets from the state, limited budgets from uh, the federal government, and also these unfunded mandates, it's really difficult. And so I think it's something we all need to look at seriously. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other business? Out in the audience, any other business? Anything anyone would like to say? How's your chance? You can turn your cell phones on again now, since you didn't turn them off. <laughs> uh, executive session, there's none tonight, and I would. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to